Okay, here it is. I got my my reeds in from the Harpery. Jamie Beb at Beb at the uh, Harpery there uh, was kind enough to um, send me some some uh, uh, spring steel reeds, and I got so excited that uh, uh, yesterday I um, made a couple of frames, the initial bends. Um, so I am geared up and ready to go. Um, I can't wait, so let's get this thing open. All right, I just kind of flipped you around for a bit of a bird's eye view. Let's see what we got. Get this open here. Nice kind of dull. We've got all right. We should have some reeds in here. Let's get this open. Aha, here we go. So He's given me some samples of a few different sizes here, a few different grades as well, a couple different grades, a couple different sizes. So whoop, what we have, this. we uh, whoop, so we've got 1095 spring steel at 25 thou thickness. We have got another 1095 spring steel, 20 thou thickness. And the same thicknesses in 1075. Uh, now I believe the 1095 is a harder rock well, so it's going to have it's going to be a stiffer reed. Um, and then of course the different thicknesses as well is going to affect how they vibrate. So this should be a lot of fun to play around with. Uh, like I said, uh, he's given me a couple of different sizes here um, that he uh, he pre-cut for me on his. Um, Sheer, uh, and there's a he's, there's a cool short that he he did on his YouTube channel that I'll uh, I'll link to it somehow in my video here. Uh, you should check it out. But that's how how he ended up making them for me because uh, he's got the proper tooling for that. I do not, and um, yeah, I think this is going to help out quite a bit. So uh, again, looking very forward to getting started on this. Okay, so I have decided that I'm going to try out the 1075 25 thou thickness read material for my first harp. So this one is based on my spike series, but it's using a, a thicker gauge uh, square stock here. Um, but I decided that I wanted to go with uh, the lower rock well. So it's a, it's a, a, it's a lower hardness steel, um, which should make it a little easier to work with, but it's also thicker. So it's going to be a little bit more forgiving. So it's my first time working with proper spring steel, um, which has this kind of blue tinge to it which they call that blue tempered. So yeah, um, again, Jamie uh, from the Harpery graciously um, cut these to a uh, taper that he uh, just tends to go with um, as a starting point. And uh, fortunately enough for my first one here, it's actually pretty close to what I had already come up with. So uh, I think this is gonna be hopefully a good build. Um, uh, I hope it comes together quite well, and then I've got these other two frames to experiment with, plus some thicker stuff, which is probably going to, I don't know if I'll carry on with that sort of thing, but um, that was from earlier experimentation. But yeah, I've got a number of uh, reed samples here that I'm going to try out, and this should be a lot of fun coming up with um, some new harps. Stay tuned. Well, actually, I'm just going edit, to edit this video together, and it should happen pretty quick.
Okay, so what I did there to hide some of the tool marks from manhandling this thing um, was I just filed some notches into the frame to kind of give it kind of like a, I don't know, toothy sort of dragon mandible sort of effect to it or whatever. But I think it'll look cool. And it beats uh, really having all these ugly tool marks in it. It gives it kind of a cool design. So yeah, here we go. What I'm doing here is I'm making the relief at the very end of the frame, which helps prevent clanking of the reed against the frame. You don't quite hit it just right. You know, I think it looks cool too. And this is my method until I get my new bench grinder off my brother. I might take a little bit more off. We'll see how things progress, but I am going to maybe just sand this down a little bit more, with the fanning wheel, and then I'm going to start shaping the reed and getting ready to do the reed channel. Okay, I've done a little bit of sanding of the uh, just the bare steel to get kind of a cleaner finish for now, something to work with. I punched uh, the serial number 001 into it, into a couple sides. I don't know what I'm, what series this is going to be yet. I, I, this is uh, <laughs> kind of going, it should have been one of my bent rail series because it's becoming an experiment, but I really like what I did with the um, the notch marks to hide some of the tooling marks from my frustrations in bending the frame. Uh, you can still see a little bit of that there, but uh, yeah, anyway, we're going to move on to working the reed, which uh, it, the edge is, um, is straight because it was cut by Jamie at the Harpery, by his using his shear. He's the one who sent me um, a number of reed sizes to try. And uh, I am just going to file the edge just to get it smooth before I start to grind it down to put an edge on it. So how I do that is I just stick my ax file in my vise here and I run it just along the edge like such. Now, remember, Vice, uh, files only cut in one direction and that would be this direction. I'm only putting pressure as I cut one way. If you want to save your file, don't go backwards against the teeth. You'll just round the teeth on your file. Just light pressure, nice and smooth. Just to, you're gonna feel all the divots and rough edges of it. Because no, no tool is gonna be perfectly sharp all the time and give you like a laser cut edge. So there's always gonna be a bit of working to do to get the fine details worked into your harp. And that's what makes metalwork such an art sometimes. So 
I've always loved working with metal, even though I'm in the electrical industry. It's a, his, his shear did a good job right off the bat though. It is nice and smooth. So these are the types of things that if I get more serious about this, I'm gonna invest in that kind of tooling to make this stuff easier. My plan is I'd like to have consistent shapes that I can repeat and uh, I don't know, maybe sell. I'm using this handy little vise that believe it or not, I made in high school well over 20 years ago, made in shop class. And it's got a nice, smooth, flat face in the jaws, which is perfect for putting the, the frames whoop, of these in here, being able to get it nice and tight without putting a bunch of tool marks in it. And I'm just trying to file it nice and flat so that there is a very straight, sharp, flat edge for the reed to sit between on the deck of the harp here. That is what I've discovered is what the deck is. is the, the plane that the, the reed vibrates between. So if you look at the frame of the jaw harp, the end of it's a diamond shape. So the points are pointing towards each other and the reed is going to vibrate in between. So that flat surface, as I understand it, is called the deck. And I am just filing the edges, the inside edges of the frame, these arms here of the jaw harp frame, to get a nice sharp edge for the reed to vibrate through. So this is my little setup to do that. You gotta have a lot of patience and a little bit at a time. Always check. If you rush these things, I've found, you might be able to have something that sounds half decent because I've had some success doing that. But it sure doesn't look that nice. And as I've said throughout this video, I've got proper spring steel reeds that I'm gonna work with. So I'm gonna put a lot of effort into this harp this time. This is my first one using Jamie Bebb's spring steel, Jamie from the Harpery. So yeah, I just about, I was manhandling this frame right from the beginning, very careless and uh, put a bunch of tool marks in it and I thought, I, I want this to look good. I'm starting to get a little serious here, I think, so let's get real, right? All right. Some of this stuff, you want the tooling to make it a lot faster, but some of it you still want to put the hand touch on. Take your time. It'd be quite therapeutic. And honestly, you wouldn't be watching this right now if you didn't find it somewhat interesting to just watch somebody make something. Am I right? I think I'm right. I like to make sure I'm still flush with the edge. So I'm filing a flat surface and I'm not starting to put a new angle on it or I'm rounding it or anything like that. I'm trying to make that's why I, I take the file off every now and then, reposition it, make sure I'm right on it nice and flat. And if you go light, you let the file actually do the cutting for you. And you're less prone to starting a new edge like that. And once you start to once you've taken kind of the nicks out of the inner edge of it. Flip sides, do the same. I think I was using the uh, the double cut side of, for a little bit there, but I didn't intend to. I've taken as much material off as I want. And now what I'm wanting to do is kind of finish it where I'm taking the roughness out of the surface. 
So this is this is the sharpening edge of an axe file. I find it's, I don't even know where I got this file from, but yeah, it's Nicholson, can't go wrong. And uh, this file has been really good to me for, you know, it's meant to sharpen axe blades. So why can't it sharpen the inside of a juice hook? Let the file cut for you. That's enough of that. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the frame for now. I've pretty much got it nice and cleaned up. I've, um, uh, you know, shaped the edges there a little bit and uh, just kind of sanded it all down. Marked out the start of the reed channel, which I've started to cut in. Uh, the way this is going to fit is like such. You can see there's a mark there. And, oh, no, sorry, like that. And... This region between these two marks, I am going to grind down on this new bench grinder that I got off my brother. He hasn't used, or it hasn't hasn't been used in several years, he said. I had no room for it, so I kind of hillbillied this up real quick. And this will be my new bench grinder. And zzz, Away we go. So as you can see, I put a beveled edge, kind of a knife edge on it. And different shapes of the edge of the reed do different things. Right now I'm kind of just liking the double-edged one. Put it fit in there, something like that. Yeah, I'm quite happy with this, actually. I did a little bit more. Um, I took a bit more off with the rough stone, and then I thought, you know what? I could probably get a nice smooth edge with this finishing one, and uh, not, you know, it'll take a little practice still to get good, super straight, awesome edges or whatever, but uh, I think I did not too shabby, and uh, it was actually quite easy. So very happy with that. I've got a sharpening stone that I'm gonna just, you know, finish it off, really smooth the edge for. Um, and then I'm going to sand the flat face of it and um, get into cutting the reed channel in. Let's see if we can get ourselves a harp. You gotta be very careful. <clears throat> Put your fingers like that. Last time I did that, I actually cut it and I the tip of my finger wide open. Um, what I should really do is get a little piece of rubber or something 
But for now, I think I'll just use this uh, towel. Definitely tell a difference with the spring steel from what I was used to making, making with. So for my Spike Series harps, I was just using cut pieces of this wire stuff. And all I was doing was, again, just kind of grinding the edge down. And whoop, that's about it. Not a lot of work going into it. The idea was these ones are really cheap. My other harps... I was cutting the reeds by hand with my Dremel out of this stuff. And it's just some sort of stainless sheet steel. It's got some springiness to it. Not a lot of fun to work with. This, I can really tell. Ow, whoops. Sorry. I can really tell the difference with this spring steel. And you can just, it's so much springier and perform so much better like I can oh this is gonna be so great I can't wait I can't wait so this is just sharpening oh yeah there's an edge showing up on that yep. gotta be careful the other thing too is when the reed is nice and sharp you can actually hurt yourself playing if you get your tongue or your lips in there not and uh and you're not careful, so. I don't know if the proper way to do this is to actually, this is called a whetstone or not. One thing I'm not that great with is, even though my first machine shop job was working in a tool cutting place, tool sharpening place, I'm not the best with sharpening knives and such it seems so whether i should uh spit on this get a little water whatever i don't know but uh, this seems to be working pretty good the way i'm doing it and i've also got this little sandstone that really takes just takes the the very finest burr off the edge of it and leaves you with a nice sharp tooled edge. That is, I, I might not be able to sharpen knives, but like I said, I can sharpen reeds. And the last one I got real sharp, I, I cut myself on it. So again, you want to be very careful. Take your time. Putting a real nice finish on the reed when it's shiny. So I'm using 180 grit to start, then moving up to I think I got 320 there or something, and then up to 600 just to have a nice smooth surface for a nice looking reed.